Hi, everyone, and welcome to our webinar today entitled How to Combat Abandonment Across the New Customer Journey. Uh, for those of you who are first timers here who have maybe been lured in by our giveaway, we're very excited to have you and hope that um, this is a really good introduction to Saiba and our digital marketing offerings. Few housekeeping items before we start. If you're tweeting with us, please tweet at the handle at Saiba underscore HQ. If you have any questions throughout the course of the presentation, use the question panel in Zoom to ask and we'll get to your questions once the presentation is over. And don't worry if you miss anything because we are recording this webinar for later playback and sharing. So now I'd like to introduce our two experts. We have Michelle Tellian, Senior Manager of Client Services, and Samantha Carnell, Director of Account Management, both here at Saiba. Um, both of these two professionals have quite a bit of experience in digital marketing and have led their clients to great success and will be running us through um, some of their recommendations for abandonment at all stages of the customer journey. So thank you both for joining us today. Thanks for having us. So let's run through the agenda. We'll start with the new customer journey. For those of you who have attended our past few webinars, you've seen that we've moved from the funnel to more of a never-ending uh, customer journey loop so that um, the relationship doesn't end at the end of the funnel, it really uh, keeps going. Then um, with this never-ending loop, there are obviously far more um, opportunities for abandonment. So we'll discuss those types of abandonment and we will um, show you the solutions that we've been using with great success here at Saiba to combat abandonment. Uh, we'll wrap up with some key takeaways and then we'll take questions from the audience. So without further ado, I'm gonna pass it over to Samantha. Great, thanks for the introduction, Vicki. Um, so for all of you guys that have been to webinar before, you know that we talk a lot about the new uh, customer journey. Uh, traditionally, you know, the sales funnel that we all learned in school is this very linear, um, singular action um, funnel where, you know, one piece of it happens succinctly after the other and it all finishes with that final action conversion sale. Um, so, you know, we all know that, you know, although that does represent half of the story, um, there's a lot more to the customer journey than just that initial sale. So we have really moved along with, you know, the industry in general to look at the customer journey as more of a loyalty loop, which you can see on the right hand side of the screen. So the first, um, you know, kind of loop within the loop is that initial acquisition where we are creating awareness, um, you know, the active evaluation and finally purchase decision. After that, you know, it's really just beginning and then we have to focus on the brand experience and ultimately cultivating loyalty um, in order to create word of mouth um, and brand advocacy to ultimately, um, you know, drive those uh, customers back into the loop the next time they're ready to make a purchase. Um, so I think, you know, it overall is just a much more holistic way to view your marketing and journey of your customers. And, um, you know, it shows that each area is worthy of investment. Great, and then just taking another close look at this loyalty loop. Um, basically what I want to go over here is just the different types of abandonment that could occur at different stages in the journey. So the first area that we help our clients with is actually home page bounce. So, you know, during the initial consideration phase, home pages have extremely bounce rate. So that's the first type of abandonment we want to help combat. The next is what we call browse abandonment. Um, this is becoming much more prevalent as an area that marketers are starting to look at. So this is really, um, you know, product page views, add to cart rates um, when someone is in more of the shopping mindset. 
The last is cart abandonment, which we all pretty much know and have embraced as, you know, a lower funnel area um, to combat abandonment. This is really in, you know, the actual um, purchase funnel. So cart, checkout pages, um, things of that nature. And then the last is brand abandonment. You know, just because someone made a purchase, they still have not been totally convinced that they are brand loyal. So there is an area where they can still um, drop off and not become a loyal customer. So brand abandonment is kind of that last stage where we want to make sure that, you know, we're going to drive first time customers back into that loop in order to make them, you know, returning customers. Cool. Thanks, Samantha. That was like the perfect setup to outline all this. So starting at the very beginning of the customer journey loop, we have what we categorize as a homepage bound. And through various prospecting tactics and initial brand consideration, your team is working really hard to identify and drive those new audiences to your site only to have them abandoned without moving past your homepage. So these bounce rates really vary between different brands and what you're selling online, but most websites have bounce rates anywhere between 26 and 70%, which means that there are upwards of 70% of users who visit your homepage and immediately leave without taking a further action on the site. So in order to order optimize in your website to create the most engaging and personalized experience possible. There are several tactics and solutions to target those new buyers and then nurture them through the customer loop towards loyalty. So when engaging those new customers on your homepage, there are two main factors to focus on to help decrease that bounce abandonment rate. Timing and then also self-identification. So leveraging our on-site engagement mid-screen pop-up it's important to create early opt-in scenarios as soon as a new buyer lands on your site, which you can see on the screen here. And really the most effective way to capture email address or phone number for an SMS campaign is to offer that strong promotional incentive for the first buyer to complete his or her first purchase. Something like free shipping or percentage off their first purchase really does a great job. And then not only will this allow you to further nurture that new buyer through your homepage campaign and grow your CRM list, it's also said from a top MarTech provider that the average email address generates a minimum of $15 for a brand, which is really further increasing the value of this type of campaign on your site. So capturing the email addresses here also allows us to create browse abandonment email campaigns, which Samantha will cover shortly, um, but it also gives us the ability to better target across devices, further improving the buyer's experience on your site and increasing the likelihood that they will return to the site to purchase. And then a great case study that comes to mind um, that does a really great job of engaging and attracting those new buyers landing on your site for the first time is the example here for Miami Nautique. So through this opt-in feature, we're able to pass back the email addresses that we capture here, um, which the brand can then use to include in their promotional messaging, along with their monthly gift card raffle that they're promoting. And then in addition to decreasing homepage bounce rates for this type of early opt-in campaign, it also allows us to capture the necessary information to run those further down the funnel abandonment campaigns, which Samantha will cover next as we move more into the active evaluation phase of a new buyer. Great. Yeah, it is so, so important, Michelle, to have uh, potential customers self-identify as early as possible. Um, so we love the opt-in um, functionality. Um, and it's definitely very key as we move into the next phase, which is browse abandonment. So when we're, when we're thinking about browse abandonment, you know, we are typically one step further than the homepage, but not yet in that um, purchase funnel. So um, on most traditional e-com sites, you know, this is really like product landing pages or product category pages, and then the, the PDP or product detail pages as well. So people, you know, when they are on these pages are in the active evaluation phase, and they're typically really trying to figure out what they're looking for um, and if trying to decide if they want to add to cart. It also is a time that they likely could be doing comparison shopping, um, you know, checking out some competitors, tabbing open to Amazon to price check, you know, those sorts of activities. So that's what we're looking to really help support um, when we are looking at this area is helping people find what they're looking for. 
Um, so something that we lean very heavily on during this browse um, period is product recommendation engines. So we um, typically will recommend certain abandonment messages more focused on um, navigation to other products because they are leaving to do some type of other activity and we want to give them every possible shot to find what they're looking for. So um, some of the, uh, we have a ton of different configurations. Some of the ones that I love the most are um, best selling products, most popular products, most recently purchased. And then you can actually do configurations where you have like most, re most often purchased with whatever product they actually are looking at in the moment. So there's a lot of cool configurations that can really um, be smart about recommending products that will resonate with, with the customer. Um, you know, we love to talk about on-site when we're talking about browse abandonment, but as Michelle said, with the um, homepage email prompt, we can also, if that is, you know, present, we can then target people once they're in a shopping browse phase via email as well. So you really can do it, you know, with the on-site, which we're highlighting here, but then also through email, which is a really nice um, touch point as well. So, you know, we're looking to increase add to cart rates with these um, tactics and ultimately, you know, get people um, into the phase where we would, you know, potentially consider them uh, cart abandoners. And I um, would love to highlight Lugs. Um, it is a fantastic campaign that we are running. As you can see, a little bit of a different play on the product recommendations where we're actually featuring them in this bottom promo bar as opposed to the traditional panel that we typically will deploy. Um, and this is a, just a little more subtle way that we can, we can feature some other products if they do abandon a PDP page like this. Um, in this scenario, we're showing the most popular products for that given season um, since you know, the, the products are a little bit seasonal and um, seeing great results with this tactic so far with a 20% click-through rate um, and 30% conversion rate, which are well above um, our benchmark. So it just shows how much these product recommendations can be intelligent and really resonate with people to get them to you know, the next phase in the, in the journey. Yeah, exactly. And then once the users know what they're about to purchase, that's really, really when we move towards the user's purchase decision. So this is where the standard purchasing funnel ends. And it's also our final touch point prior to purchase, um, which is the cart abandonment campaign. So these users are extremely valuable for your brand for a bunch of different reasons. They've already shown interest and intent to buy, and they've gone as far as adding an item to their cart. And on average across brands and vertical, there is a 76% cart abandonment rate, which really tells you the importance of having a campaign like this on your site to re-engage that specific audience to prevent them from abandoning. And if you're familiar at all with Cyber Solutions, you know that cart abandonment is really our foundation solutions. Um, and it's a really great place to start if you're new to optimizing and improving the buyer's journey loop on your site. So within cart abandonment, um, our two solutions really tailored to combat this type of abandonment um, are split between re-engaging while users still on the site and has shown intent to leave the page with our on-site engagement tool, and then also retargeting users who have made it to checkout but abandoned prior to completing their purchase with our email remarketing solution. So both of these solutions allow you to customize your campaign to ensure that you are re-engaging that abandoning buyer with personalized and relevant messaging and also promotions during the cart and checkout. And it's through this precision targeting that we're able to segment the audiences by either traffic source, new versus existing buyers, where they're located in the world, or even to use it to further cross sell similar or best selling products, similar to what we would do in the browse abandonment phase. And then similar to what you see on the screen here, um, this is really specific example for an on-site cart abandonment campaign firing for that abandoning user that is trying to leave the page with something in their cart. So both these solutions ultimately work to convert more customers. Um, they provide relevant information at the right time by highlighting that urgency, the free shipping threshold, or even testimonial proof, and also by providing a customized user experience on the site 
by rebuilding the items in the user's car or recommending those similar products to upsell their purchase. And then a great use case that comes to mind um, for our email remarketing car abandonment campaign is for Susan G. Coleman, which was driving donations on the site. So as a final touch point prior to abandonment, we always recommend leveraging our triggered emails um, to send those targeted emails to visitors who leave an email address on the site, but ultimately don't convert. So as soon as these highly valued customers enter in that complete email address at checkout, or even earlier in their journey during homepage capture or browse abandonment that we covered earlier, we can capture that email address on that pre-submit basis, which typically is one step before a lot of other email service providers. And then also due to the relevant and timely nature of these campaigns, the average open rate is 45 to 55%, and we typically see a conversion rate up to 30% like we did for this specific campaign here which really further proves the power of re-engaging those high intent abandoning buyers through a type of car abandonment campaign like this. Great, yeah, I love, I love the email example. We've talked a lot about on-site um, with our examples, so it's great to see how, you know, email can also support any of these phases. Um, okay, so the last but not least area of abandonment that we really want to focus on because it's, you know, why we talked about this new customer journey in the first place is brand abandonment um, and the idea of cultivating loyalty. So a lot of brands, you know, will take on this initiative primarily with their CRM um, email targeting efforts, and that is fantastic. Um, but, you know, we really think that you can um, do some cool tactics with MarTech as well um, that can really help with brand abandonment. And, you know, in terms of, you know, looking at loyalty from an ROI perspective, you know, it's super obvious from all of the stats, you know, being that repeat customers are nine times more likely to convert, for instance, than first time visitors. It is worthy of investment um, via every channel. Um, and we, we truly believe that, you know, MarTech is no different. So um, when we look at how to cultivate loyalty, what we really look at is actually the confirmation page of a website. So if someone makes a purchase, you know, they typically will get directed to some type of confirmation or thank you page. Um, and, you know, we don't recommend that to our clients that this be a passive space. This can be an area that, um, you know, you really are re-engaging with your customers right away as soon as they complete their purchase by, um, you know, a couple of different tactics. A great example that we're showing here is actually a um, gifting campaign. So during high um, gift season, you know, for instance, holiday or mother or father's day, um, we can actually recommend that, um, you know, the customer buy a gift card as a gift for one of their loved ones. So this is just a one idea of a tactic. Um, another cool tactic might be a percentage or dollar off, you know, their next purchase for themselves. So there's a lot of different angles that you can kind of come at this with, um, but you know, all of them, we typically will recommend using that, that confirmation um, page real estate in order to do so. Um, one additional tactic that I just cannot leave out is um, driving to app. So for our clients that have really invested in an app strategy and have a mobile app, um, we know that people with a mobile app for a brand on their phone are actually three times more valuable than a customer that doesn't have an app. So the confirmation page on a mobile web experience is just prime real estate to try to incentivize that download. Um, so we, we heavily recommend this for our clients with an app where we can actually directly from the confirmation page support that download action by showing a message with the um, different app store buttons that they can click through and download the app right away. Um, we already know that they love the brand. They obviously just make a, made a purchase. This is a great time to do it. And there's no, you know, there's no inventory cost for this, like placing an ad. It's directly on, on their website. So it's very efficient in terms of spend. So I love this solution and it always performs really well for our clients um, and something that 
you know, not everyone has an app, but if you do, it would definitely something to take advantage of. All right. Well, thank you so much, Michelle and Samantha. Um, that was really fascinating. And it really goes to show that Saiba has solutions at every stage of the customer journey and can offer digital solutions that are holistic in nature. So um, to quickly recap, um, in this new loop, as opposed to the sales funnel, abandonment can happen at all stages of the customer journey, not just at the bottom when a transaction um, or typical conversion is taking place. Um, at Cybo, we love our on-site engagement tools, and um, in the past few years, we've really gotten a lot more sophisticated with what we are able to offer through that and a really good way of leveraging um, the data that you have um, collected on clients um, or customers rather is um, a product feed. So it's definitely something to investigate further. And um, we really can't stress it enough. We know the numbers, but um, that relationship between a customer and a brand after all that you've done to really get them into your world um, should not stop after conversion. There are so many different ways um, from post-sale solutions that offer um, discounts on the confirmation page to uh, in-app downloads. Just um, there's so much opportunity to increase the lifetime value of your customers and build loyalty and really um, enhance your brand that way. So do not rest on your laurels. Um, so now it looks like we have a few minutes to take some questions from the audience. So the first one I have here is, um, can you explain more about how a product feed works? Samantha, do you want to take that one? Sure, yeah. Um, so product feed is that dynamic functionality we were talking about. Um, and what the best course of action is, typically most brands have a, a Google um, XML feed that they use for like their Google shopping ads, and they would simply just give us access to that it updates automatically. So we would be able to pull in, um, you know, on a, a pretty updated cadence, whatever products they have listed on the site. Um, if for some reason a brand does not have that readily available, we can typically build our own pro product feed through our JavaScript. We would just need to kind of evaluate um, on a case by case basis if that's possible. You know, it depends on things like how the site is breadcrumbed, um, but definitely a, a good option if you don't have a Google shopping feed. Great. Another one just came in. Um, I've only used offsite marketing and I'm interested in starting with some of these digital solutions. Where would be the best place to start? I think you can get that one, Michelle. Would love to. Um, so basically, we would just want to work with you to figure out your goals. You know, um, it's really important to know if you are you know, just trying to um, increase your CRM list, because then maybe the homepage email capture might be best for you. Or um, if you really want to combat overall site abandonment rate, or even specifically just the cart abandonment rate, um, there's a lot of different ways we can go. If you're unsure and just want to start in one spot, I would always recommend setting up like a standard cart abandonment campaign. Like I mentioned, these people are so ready to buy. Um, they're definitely the easiest people to be re-engaging and retargeting um, since they've already shown that interest and intent to buy by raising their hand, adding items into their cart. Um, and you'll really get the highest return of investment just by having that type of campaign set up. Um, so if you really don't know, I would definitely say start with cart abandonment, but if you have some other goals in mind, maybe we can sit down and talk and then figure out the best sol solution specific to your brand. Yeah, I think that's a great place to start. I mean, the customers are doing the heavy lifting. They're into you. You just got to seal the deal and uh, <laughs> card abandonment solutions will definitely, definitely help with that. Um, so it looks like we have time for one more question. Uh, what would you need from a brand to run the post-sale app download campaign? That looks like a question for Samantha. Yep. So if our, you know, if our JavaScript is already present on a client's website, um, the integration is actually very easy. We just need um, to pull a link or have the client pull a link uh, from their tracking platform that will direct, you, you know, to the App Store or Google Play Store. 
um, that will direct right to the, the download. Um, so it's, it's really super simple. Um, we would just pull that link as the CTA link and configure a creative to display on the confirmation page. Great. Well, Michelle and Samantha, thanks again for everyone who's tuned in. Um, thank you for joining and learning more about our digital marketing solutions. For those of you who have um, entered the drawing for a free month of digital solutions, we will be announcing our winner tomorrow, Thursday, June 25th by noon, so keep an eye out. And if you have any other questions about these solutions and you'd like to just get involved or sort of see what Cyba can do for you, do not hesitate to email us at marketing at Thank you.